So many users uh, want to import STL files into Fusion and then uh, modify them or just st simply 3D print them. Um, and the problem in Fusion is that it has a limitation. Um, you can import it and then if you want to uh, convert it, you have to convert it in order to 3D print. You have to convert it into a, a BRIP or a solid body. And the limit in Fusion is currently 10,000 faces. And very often these you know, it's particularly if it comes from a scanned source, uh, as this object does, uh, it's, a, it's a bone actually. Um, it has so many triangles uh, that you can't really import it into Fusion and then convert it because the limit is 10,000 faces. Um, also, this wouldn't convert well, well, even if it has a much lower number of triangles, it would convert well into a, uh, a T-spline because it's all triangles and T-splines need quad surfaces. So. There's a way to do that, however, and that requires a different application. So I'm going to use Blender for this. Um, in this case, that's almost the newest version. The newest version is uh, 2.76a, um, but for all purposes, that doesn't matter. Let me quickly delete these objects. We need those. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is import that STL mesh uh, that I just showed on the screen. Uh, it's off to the side here, out of the clipping range. I'm not going to explain too much what I just did. I set the origin of that object to its uh, mass center, so to speak. And now I'm going to snap this to the cursor. There it is. Let me scale it up a little bit. And there's, there's your object. Um, we go into wireframe mode, you can see it's a, it's a lot of triangles and actually in Blender you can see how many faces an object has and how many triangles. Blender is a subdivision surface modeling software and mostly works with quad faces so it splits it up between just faces and triangles. But in this case that's already over 22,000 so you couldn't really import, uh, convert this infusion into a, uh, into a B-Rep. Uh, so what do we do about this? Let me turn this back into solid shading mode. So what we can do in Blender, we go over here to this panel and uh, click on this uh, wrench. And that gives us all the modifiers in Blender. And in this case, we are just simply going to use a remesh modifier. So this looks pretty spiky. And the reason why that is because sharp is the default. So we set this to smooth and that already looks better. So that approximates the original shape of this uh, of the of the original mesh uh, very well. That's the original mesh, and that's how it looks remeshed. So if we want to increase detail, we can increase the octree depth here. But obviously, we also include uh, increase the number of faces here. So it's thousand five hundred. Let's go one more up. That's that's already six thousand faces. So that's pretty. That's a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent mesh. And we go into wireframe. You can see this is all quad faces. Nice quad faces. So we either could use this as a T spline, um, even though it would have to be said using it, trying to modify a T spline with uh, six thousand faces. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Anyway, uh, now what we can do, uh, we can simply export this out into a uh, OBG file, um, selection only, that makes sense if, if your file has more than one object. Um, we don't need the UVs or the materials and I'm going to call this bone object and export this object. Right, We don't need this anymore, so now we go into Fusion and uh, we simply upload the data. And there it is. So now that it is imported, uh, we'll open it. Okay, there it is. There's our mesh. And that this approximates the, the original shape very well, um, but it's much more manageable in size. 
Um, so now you, you can do several things. You can directly convert it into a BREP or you can first convert it into a T-spline uh, and then into a BREP and that's what we are going to do. Um, so I'm going to convert this into a T-spline. And this is going to take a while after I click this button so I'll cut this out in the video. All right, we're back. So now this is converted into a very nice T-spline. You could actually go and edit this, uh, but again, it doesn't make a lot of sense uh, to edit a T-spline with that much, uh, with that many polygons, with that much detail. Um, but what we can do now, we convert it into a uh, very detailed solid body. All right, now this, uh, this object is a solid body. Uh, you can drill holes in it, cut slices off, whatever you want to. Uh, so I hope this helps.